Cool. So a lot of talk today about data, which is awesome because I'll also be talking about data. So hi, I'm Vishal from Ambi Robotics, and today I'll be telling you guys about some recent work on scaling robot data for industrial reliability in our latest Prime One Foundation model. So first, a bit about Ambi. So e-commerce is growing at an unprecedented rate. People are purchasing now more than ever. And how do you get packages? Well, through the postal system as parcel. So now parcel volume is also booming. And although a lot of bulk upstream processes are automated, a lot of downstream processes are still not, and they're manual. An example is last mile sortation to the final mail routes to your house. So as you can imagine, shipping logistics are a massive headache. Here's some video footage from inside a warehouse, admittedly in China, but a similar thing is happening in the US. So as you can see, it's very chaotic and also looks very unsafe. And so yeah, they're also a backache. This is very much injury prone work and it's a lot of bending over, reaching into bins and it strains the back. So naturally, this is a good application for robotic automation. But there's a challenge, right? The challenge for robotics is the diversity. Humans excel at generalization. We're not the best at any one thing, but we're really good at adapting to different things. So if a human worker is picking items out of a bin and you ask them to pick off a conveyor, they're able to adapt to that, whereas a robot might struggle. And the challenge here is servicing the diverse processes. So different warehouses do things slightly differently. The diverse products, you have a range of products from large heavy boxes to small bags. And the diverse packaging, so you have different colors, textures, and a lot of damaged goods. And this is the problem we're solving at Ambi Robotics using AI-powered solutions. So at Ambi Robotics, we empower people to handle more. We were founded in 2018 in Berkeley, California, and we're now 50 strong. So how did we get here, right? We were born from breakthroughs in sim to real AI research at UC Berkeley. sim to real is simulation to reality. Basically, how do you learn robust robot policies that seamlessly transfer to the real world. And with our breakthroughs, breakthroughs came recognition, of course. So what are we selling? What's our product? We couple, ro we couple modular robotic hardware with AI-powered software. And our software accomplishes a variety of tasks, or as we like to call them, skills such as picking, moving, placing, inspecting, and verifying. So here's some footage from one of our robots in operation. So as you can see, the robot is picking items out of a bin. It's intelligently placing them on a buffer, and there's a gantry taking the item out to a mail sack, sorting it. So what's happened since we were founded in 2018? Well, we've seen this rapid growth in LM foundation models, which have shown impressive performance. So natural question has been, how do we extend these models to robotics as robotic foundation models? So here's some work from physical intelligence and DeepMind on robotic foundation models in a household setting. But there's a problem, right? There's a big gap in reliability. Industrial applications require anywhere from 95 to 99% accuracy. And this is because mistakes are costly. So for example, if one of our robots missorts a package, the logistics provider has to pay for the return postage and the postage going back out. This eats the, into their margins, as, and as you can imagine, they don't like that. Also, you might say, hey, isn't 1% not a lot, right? 
but remember back to the immense parcel volume, even in a single day, 1% of that is actually a lot. And the industrial setting is also very different. It's messy, cluttered, and it just visually looks very different from the household setting. So the big question is how do we bring recent advances in foundation models to industrial robotics while maintaining high reliability? And our answer to that is PRIME1. PRIME stands for Production Ready Industrial Manipulation Expert. Production ready means reliability. Industrial expert means PRIME is a domain expert. And once again, what is the domain? Well, the domain is all these AI skills. So picking, moving, placing, inspecting, verifying parcels. So yeah, where do we start, right? Well, we start with the data. So at AMB, we have a wealth of data. We have over 200,000 hours of operating data in production, which corresponds to over 1 billion diverse images. But the problem is these images are all unlabeled. So a natural way to approach this is something like ChatGPT. So you can think of the ChatGPT training as in two stages. We have this initial pre-training where we train the GPT-4 base model, and th then we have the fine-tuning stage where we tune it towards chat-like responses and get ChatGPT. So our prime training follows that same paradigm. In the initial pre-training stage, we sample 20 million unlabeled images, and then we run this large-scale self-supervised learning on a 3D reconstruction task. The 3D reconstruction task is key because it forces our base model to learn strong 3D priors. Then we have this secondary fine-tuning stage. So first, we carefully curate and label a small high-fidelity data set. This can come from human annotation, synthetic data, or high-resolution sensor readings. Then we run supervised fine-tuning and get a downstream model, in this case, prime pick. We can run this same process for other downstream tasks, such as movement and placement. So now I'll dive into some of the downstream tasks. So the first task is stereo vision, because how can we interact with the world if we don't know what it looks like? So broadly, this task is how do you estimate 3D geometry from a pair of 2D images using correspondences. So basically, if you have a pair of images of this cube from two different cameras, how do you match parts of the cube in one image to the other image? So if you see the bottom right-hand corner, we match the green points, the red points, how do we match the white points? And this is challenging for a couple of reasons. It's challenging because there's high sensitivity to correspondence errors. Small pixel errors can correspond to, real, to larger errors in the real world in 3D. It's also, difficulty, it's also difficult when we have low color variation and occlusions. For example, if this cube was really all blue, it would be hard to match different areas of it. Also, if we can't see part of the cube, how do we match it? And finally, precise downstream control of the robot requires superhuman sub-pixel accuracy. So we're matching below the pixel level. Luckily, Prime excels at this task. Prime achieves a 19% reduction in error compared to our existing method. And here you have a point cloud visualization where on the left you have a color reference, in the center you have the original point cloud, on the right you have the new prime point cloud. And you can see the new prime point cloud is much smoother, surfaces are much clearer, and we can clearly see the delineations of objects. This means that our downstream policy can easily figure out what's a good place to grasp these objects. In the case of a suction gripper, it can look for flat planar surfaces, which are hard to tell in this, left, in this middle image. So a question you might ask is, what's unique about our data, right? What's the value of using this high-quality production in-domain data? 
because stereo vision is a task well studied in the literature, and there exists many open source stereo vision data sets. So we test this hypothesis by pre-training on three popular open source data sets and find a 23% increase in error. So we see poor performance, and this validates the quality and the value of our production in-domain data. The next task is pick planning. So basically, once you can see the world, how do you interact with it? The task here is to estimate grass correspondence affordances. So regions in 3D space that are favorable for robustly picking up an item. For example, if you have a mug, you'd want to pick it up by the handle. And this is challenging for a couple of reasons. First, it's challenging because there's a huge variety in item geometry, many di different shapes and sizes of items. There's also imprecision in sensing and control. When you tell the robot to go somewhere, it doesn't always get to that exact point in space. There's also the problem of occlusion and partial observability. Oftentimes, you can't see the full object, especially if you're looking from above, so you have to sort of reason about what the rest of it might look like. So Prime also excels at this task. We see a 16% reduction in error compared to our existing method. So all the improvements I presented up until now were great, but what really excites me is Prime's ability to scale. So a lot of recent work in foundation models has focused on establishing scaling laws, basically power laws between data and performance. So here we see the scaling law for Prime. On the x-axis, you see the amount of data in tokens in log scale. On the y-axis, you see the downstream task error for the stereo vision task. And we can see this nice, almost linear relationship. Now, why is this important, right? Why are scaling laws important? They're important because first they show the potential for improvement, right? If we pump in more data, we will definitely see better performance. Second, they show the value of data and also the value of collecting more data. This is the data mode people talk about. And finally, they allow us to make informed decisions. Obviously, training on orders of magnitude more data requires orders of magnitude more resources. But with these, we can now justify that. So what's kind of crazy is we've only used less than 10% of our data on hand. So this just shows how much more room for improvement there could be if we scale to our entire data. So along that line, let's talk about the scale of prime data. And let's put it in context with some other open data sets, right? So these are some existing real robot data sets in terms of hours of training data. So first we have the 1x World Model Challenge, where 1x is a humanoid company, and they release some data as part of an open challenge. That's 100 hours. Then we have the Distributed Robot Interaction data set, a popular research data set with 350 hours. Then we have Amazon's open source research ARM bench data set with 630 hours. Then we have the open cross embodiment data set, another popular research data set with 4,000 hours. Then we have physical intelligence's Pi Zero training data set with 10,000 hours. Now we have the Prime One data set with 20,000 hours. So double the next closest contender. Then we have Ambi's total production data upwards of 200,000 hours of robot data. So finally, this ties into our Ambi's data flywheel approach, where more data results in better models, which results in increased productivity for our customers, which results in customer growth and increased demand for our products, which results in larger deployments of our fleet, and that that results in more data, and the cycle continues. So to recap the prime wins. First, improved performance. Second, scaling properties. Third, we're able to tap into vast unlabeled data across tasks. Fourth, we're able to use a uniform transformer 
backbone. And fifth, we avoid maintaining task-specific architectures and infrastructure. So what's next? Well, we started with two of our most challenging 3D tasks, and we'd like to extend to other tasks such as quality control. Thanks for listening.